we uh, we left with the uh, with si Honda yung team leader nila na mga Kuroki uh, he was about to finish off Takuya and uh, Naoto then all of a sudden the prophet appears he sh- uh, she uh, she shot him in the back Uh, Takuya and uh, Naoto finally realized that they too have roles to play so sumunod na sila doon sa mga kapatid nila and uh, they all got together in this um, this point of nothingness that uh, that Yuya and Naoya were in so uh, nag-usap na rin sila ng masinsinan finally yun pala ang ang lumalabas pala ngayon uh, the Kiriharas went through a process of reincarnation so Naoto in his short disappearance becomes was reborn as Taoya si Naoya naman in his moment of disappearance during that time with uh, uh, when uh, Mikuria caught them escaping He gets reborn as Yuya. So that explains the uh, the visions Yuya gets uh, with uh, with the Kiri, with the Kiriharas in it. Hmm. So, ang naging deduction ni Takoya is this: our souls got split. Hmm. He's got a point, but uh, the Kiriharas have now embraced uh, the fact that they do have roles to play. So, pinalbayan na nila sa mga Kuroki yung trabaho nila. So, nagpaalam sila. They went their separate ways. And, uh, medyo nag-alangan nga si Naoya, pero sinabi naman ni Naoto, This is our role. We've played it. So, something to that effect. We found out that the prophet was actually Kimi. So, in reality, Kimi shoots his her own boss in the back that's what said by ni Honda god damn it my whole team has betrayed me after that we we saw the Kurokis um, coming to may nakita silang kotse that same car was driven by the Kiriharas uh, well they, they were they boarded the car and nakita nila yung notebook ni Shoko at biglang napagano'n si Yuya nakita niya lahat ng contents ng notebook na yon kinausap siya mismo ni Shoko Futami so sinabi na niya kay Takoya oh dito tayo pinapupunta so it led them to a um, to an antique shop wherein nakilala nila ang mga may-ari nito walang iba kundi ang mga magulang nila So yeah, they they were about to to have uh, the reunion of their lives when Kimi suddenly steps in. Tried brainwashing both the brothers, but sinabi ni Yuya, nope, we will have none of that. In sabi in sabi to this, sabi to this effect, Yuya said, in all those times that I have connected with Naoya, he has helped me learn to to. Uh, to open and close this lock freely kumbaga yung mental lock na nilagay niya sa sarili niya kayang-kaya na niyang buksan at saran ng kusa at any time uh, any time he places kaya nagamit niya yun against kay Kimi and of course to protect uh, ang his own kuya so uh, walang nagawa si Kimi so And sinabi naman din ng mga Kuroki sa kanya, kay Kimi, that you have your own version of order. We have now our own version of order. We will change the world in our own way. Sa, eh, sinabi ni Takuya, so, please leave us alone. Well, umalis na si Kimi and uh, she said, Goodbye, Messiahs. What did she mean by that? 
closing credits were rolling, we just fa- we found out that the Kirihara's had a hand in protecting the Kuroki spirits. So, kumbaga, ito yung pinaka role to play ng mga Kirihara to protect the Kuroki's uh, bloodline. So, alam na nila beforehand that makikilamang na papatayin ng SWE ang mag-anak na to. So, they just stepped in and interfered. They they protected uh, the entire Kuroki family. And uh, and they even gave uh, the parents on what to do next. O, oh, sabi, ito. Uh, uh, drop the name, Mikuria. Tutulungan ka ng mga to. Sige, punta sila. Yun. And sinabi na lang ni ni Naoto yep this is our role to play let's go na- let's go now yeah so <sighs> final scene after serving uh, the area Yuya and Tawya finally concluded that well they're now seeing the future they're now seeing a bright future pero Hmm. It didn't end without uh, without making me deep dive. So let's break this finale down ARD style. Pace. The only time the pace picked up is when Kimi tried to uh, tried to try to brainwash the Korokis. And oh, sinabi lang ni Yuya, we'll have none of that. Why did I? Well. Um, Why did I why did I cite this as a um, a time where the pace picked up? Shempre. Well in in all indications, Kimi is considered a villain here. Kasi siyang uh right hand man ni Honda, yung dati nilang team leader. Uh, who's uh, who's corrupt as fuck? Who's a uh, what you call this? Not not corrupt as fuck, but a um um a subservient slave to the system yeah that would be a better description to this uh, uh to this dickhead so the rest of the episode you really need to slow the pace down pagdating sa mga ganong sequences kasi <sighs> the viewers need a um a detailed explanation as to what the fuck is going on because things have really got complicated since episode 10 and well yeah this explains why the Kurokis and the Kiriharas are 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 that connected bakit so, ganun ka solid ang connection nila sa isa't isa because the Kiriharas have been practically reincarnated as the Korokis. If you don't call that a twist, I don't know what will. So that's what the pacing will make you realize. Kaya. Slow but impeccable ang pacing ng finale na to. Flow naman. First gear shift was when uh well when finally the Korokis and the Kiriharas uh, gathered together to um, to really ha- to really have a heart to heart talk as to what the fuck was going on. They gathered around this uh, this gaming table where um, well well where all of them remember this because it's part of their mem- it's part of all their memories. So dito nila na realize that the Kiriharas got reborn as the Koroki brothers. Takoya found that disturbing. Sabi niya kasi, Damn. I just couldn't accept that that I was you. <laughs> yeah, he was he was uh, he was referring to Naoto, of course. Yung kapa niya pang anay. Uh, why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. Because if it weren't for this gear shift, the whole finale would be uh would be absolute would be an absolute piece of shit. <laughs> the, the the entire finale would be shitty. Because this totally explains why 
the Co- the Kuroki brothers and the Kirihara brothers are so connected to one another psychically so you just couldn't uh, I myself couldn't fathom as to how wow this is a one in uh, one in ten million chance of happening it happened to the Kiriharas and the Kurokis so wow this this is quite a mind-blowing gear shift probably one of the most mind-blowing gear shifts I have ever seen second gear shift was when they uh, they finally agreed that well they each have their role to play so the Kirihara brothers are well act- they're actually not done with their roles and of course the Kurokis went back why did I call it a gear shift? Because if it's not a gear shift, na to, all the main protags, uh, the, the Koroki brothers and the Kirihara brothers, wouldn't, uh, would still be at war with each other. And this would not end. It will totally spell destruction for both Earths. Kaya crucial ang gear shift. Na to. Final gear shift was when Yuya finally asserts himself by manning up to Kimi regarding uh, this her brainwashing activities eh, so simply lang sinabi ni Yuya rito in all the times that I have connected with Naoya Nao- Nao- I have finally learned to lock and unlock this mental state of mind freely I don't have to do it unconsciously or even on a whim so to that effect he said that Bakit gear shift ito? Well, sipi lang. This is where the Koroki brothers became the messiahs na sinasabi ni Kimi. Kasi uh, they've had enough of the SWE's lies and screw jobs. They've seen it all. Yung, they've basically had enough of the government telling everybody what to do on uh, how, to, how to even think. They've simply had enough. So it's about time that they change this world on their own power. Well, Kimi had probably had uh, realized that she shouldn't try for what the Korok is right now. And well, I think she just realized that ang pinakamabigat ng kalaban ngayon ay mga Koroki. That's why I call it a gear shift. And of course, through this gear shift, the Koroki family is finally, re- finally reunited. Nakita nila uli ang mga magulang nila. Well, talag, buhay na buhay pa. And it's a happy ending. So, these three gear shifts, panoorin nyo lang ang mga gear shift na to. You'll fully understand the finale. Yun lang. Plot-wise, Malinis. Bakit? Despite having so many flashback moments, it just supplemented the main continuity of this particular episode. Kasi, we are now finally able to piece together all of them. So, until the time na ayon, uh, both sets of brothers were finally able to just chill and share notes so yun nga nalaman na nalaman nilang lahat na the Kiriharas were actually reborn as the Kuroki brothers so medyo uh, like I said a while ago medyo nadidisturbing si ano to, si Takoya to think that he that he used to be Naoya and um The flash, the quick flashback sequences, and the eventual, uh, the final moments of this uh, finale. No, you can't discount the final moments of the finale, because, because of the, uh, the, because of the coming together of all those backs, backstories, at sa yung pagkaka piece together ng ng apat na bida. Totally justified na yun nangyari sa mga final moments of the finale. 
Malinis pa rin ang plot. Malinis. So, base, flow, and plot. They all came together for this finale. I should say, mga kalahistal, one of the most quiet finales this year. And it's also one of the best. So, Night Dead 2041 finale. Now I'm sure some of you would uh, would find this episode boring. <laughs> Probably because you haven't seen the whole of this anime before. And I'm all Night Dead. If there's one thing I learned from Night Dead 2041, it's this. Cyberpunk and Supernatural can be a good mix. In case you still don't know, Night Dead 2041 is a cyberpunk anime. Pero, maganda yung pagkakamix ng, uh, ng supernatural elements dito. Because, in a, uh, in a dystopic society, in a world full of outrageous technology, there are psychics roaming the earth. Psychics as powerful as Shoko Futami, the Kiriharas, and even the Korokis. Which makes a great storyline. Kaya, Night Dead 2041, thank you so much for uh, giving me the chance to, uh, to review and critique you. And thank you for giving us a great run. Uh, surely, mga lifestyle, this is a strong contender for the Otako 5 this year. Talagang, uh, uh, it, well, it's a franchise that it's been long thought to be dead. Kasi after Night Dead Genesis, wala na sumunod eh, before this. Then, Shirogumi came out with this one, Night Dead 2041. It just made us cyberpunk fans really happy. Kasi, eh, madala na ngayon ang mga cyberpunk animes eh. The last one was of course X-Arm, which was just almost nine months ago then of course you know, well compare comparing this to that mas maganda naman ang hamang na mas maganda ang Night Dead 2041 you feel me mga ka lifestyle so again to Shirogumi and the creators of the Nighthead franchise thank you so much so again Night Dead 2041 finale there's another mic drop. Final duels of possibly of this franchise for my lifestyle. I don't know. So, what to expect? Wala muna. Just enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Ito pala nangyari dyan. Vanstar did detonate the, uh, the grenade na that, will, that will suck all the oxygen out of, that, uh, out of that area. So, rendering sana, Spirit of Fire powerless. Ibang nangyari. How has this or well, now has this ability to, to to change the attribute of anything including his um his guardian spirit si spirit of fire ginawa niyang water si spirit of fire grabe the danger has passed oh bali sa fire si spirit of fire he now orders spirit of fire to devour the spirits of x3 yung tatlo ito pala kasi ang pagkain ng spirit ally niya <laughs> despicable so, well, everyone saw it, including yo, including the X loss. So, due to, um, due to how, uh, 
um, wow, you could call it unspeakable actions. Uh, hinold mo na ang shaman fight at ni-repair yung stadium na para para ma-repair nila na mabuti ang stadium kasi nasira pa eh. So how uh, took this uh, took this as an opportunity to tell it all to everybody is in everybody in this inner circle practically that how is his twin brother uh, unang hindi matanggap ni Manta and well as usual Anna is there to explain it to him sabi ni Anna you, sh- you shouldn't have been told that everything pero sinabi naman ni uh, siguro explain naman ni, ha- ni Yo na <laughs> who cares if he's my twin brother siguro alam ni Yo na he's the only one who can kill how now this um somewhat sparks the uh the backstory that um uh, that occupied probably the latter half of the episode nagkumpisa ang lahat ito kay 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 Yomei ang lolo ni Yo so kinuwento niya sa sa teacher ni Ana yung babae yung matandang babae so they came, they went back to that time where in uh how is about to be reincarnated natantya nila na ang pag-reincarnate ni, ni How ay ang mismong ay ang uh, well, ay ang mismong anak ng babae na ang ipanganganak kambal so how is he going to uh, discern which is how well uh, the moment of birthing came ayon so may una nang lumabas <sighs> He didn't have to figure it all out. Nagpakilala na right there and then. See how? Nagpakita na ng lakas. And wow. He actually disfigured the face of his own father. Nandun kasi, ta- kasi ang tati nila ni Yo. So, pero, uh, Spirit of Fire was in its basic form at the time. Pero ang lakas. He was able to subdue both uh, Yomi and uh, Yo's father. Sab, uh, his parting shot was raise my twin brother well so well uh, doon lang na-realize ng buong Asakura family that uh, ang, itinira, ang itinira niyang kakambal niya uh, is the one and only person that can kill him yun nga eventually si Yo yun final scene sinabi na lang ng ng lolo niya na we should raise this boy we should raise this child well he is our only hope yun na lobas yan si Yona in order to explain it to you all I'm going let's break this episode down ARD style pace well need I say more about the pacing of this episode after how devouring the souls of all members of X3 things went slow understandable kasi how has just displayed his full power and everyone in the stadium was shocked even some uh, members of the even some officials okay pero ang, ang hindi nang pati nagdito si Silva because nalaman natin sa episode na to that Silva comes from house line in the Patch Tribe so paniniwala rin niya na he needs to kill how to parang, parang kayo parang kayo so in order for us to fully understand what is uh, how high the stakes are right now ayun pinakita yung backstory sequence So, well, if you picked up the pace right there and then, hindi ma-appreciate the mga viewers. But, uh, the way I remember it from the original series, parang, ano eh, 
parang binilisan nila ang pacing nun. Kaya, ako personally, hindi ko masyado na-appreciate yung mismong backstory nila, how at yo. But here, talagang ramdam ko eh. Ramdam ko yung yung bigat ng uh, ng na ng pinapasan ni Yo ngayon. Ramdam ko rin yung uh, yung bigat ng sitwasyon because how actually spared his twin brother because how truly believes that uh, na nahati ang kapangyarihan niya nung pin- pinanganak siya bilang kambal pero yung dominant spirit niya nandito sa how na to so we can say that yo has a great chance of killing his own twin brother because yung power kalahate ng power ni how ay nasa kanya if you would uh, if you would bank on that logic palang and that's what the pacing will make you realize kaya kung nagbagal ane kung bumilis ang pacing ng episode na to like in the like that backstory episode in the original series hindi ma-appreciate ng, ng mga viewers ngayon considering the current generation of anime fans have short attention spans yeah tama ang pacing ng episode na to flow naman I only saw two gear shifts in this uh in this one first was when yo finally decided to spill the beans about how una um horror horror talk exception bakit kasi hindi sinabi agad ni yo sa kanila ito well Anna's explanation and Ren's explanation also said it said it well kasi tingin nyo ba may magagawa na ba tayo kay something to respect tingin nyo ba may magagawa na ba tayo kay how pag nalaman natin ito na maaga pa I don't think so so yun ang and uh, Yo's reasoning was very simple kasi ayaw na niyang may iba pang madamay sa laban ng mga asakura so Yo's got a point okay? he values his friends That's what this gearship will try to tell you. So, yeah, he, he, he made a he made a decent move here by uh, by only telling them now about uh, the secret between him and how. So, final gear shift was during the backstory sequence. No, the entire Asakura family decided to to raise Yo well and prepare for his eventual showdown with his own twin, twin brother si Hao <sighs> need I explain this gear shift these two gear shifts uh, definitely will play a role down the line in this anime especially the last one Plot-wise, planchado, napaka-planchado. Because, well, if you're not up to speed with the with the storyline of Shaman King, this episode is for you. Kasi, ito yung, kumaga, we can call this the, um, the episode zero of the franchise. Kasi, ito yung uh, origins ng, uh, ng birthing ni Lahaw at Yo. Now we no ako alam ako matagal ko na lang nakambal sila eh. pero for the current generation of Shaman King fans now you know kambal sila yo at how and this is the backstory to explain it so you really need a uh, a well ironed out plot to to uh, to give everybody the heads up on on uh, how it went down during their birthing and and uh, how weak the Asahora family was at the time well I couldn't call it weak because um, uh, Yo's father said it well we all made a mistake in this 
So there's no need for for Yomi to um, to put himself solely account- accountable for this. Talag well, Bottom line. Inutakan silang lahat ni How. That's how um that's how fucking evil this entity is. Eh, pero bagong panganak pa lang. Nagpakilala na siya at yung kanyang spirit guardian ay nandun ha? Damn. Talagang the blood will make you realize that. So, pace, flow, and blood, they all came together for this episode. Like I said a while ago, mga ka-lifestyle, if you're new to Shaman King, this is your episode zero. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 25. <sighs> Ever wondered why I made this review a short one? Because... <laughs> Tell you the truth, mga lifestyle. This episode is self-explanatory in nature. <laughs> I'm well. This this is one of the very few episodes I could say that um, I just did my job as a critic. And dito yung pinaka origin nila how at yoy eh. dito sa episode na to. Yung sa pilot ng reboot hindi masadong inexplain, but here. Oh yeah. It it's a full explainer. Talagang uh the Asakuras had been uh have been fighting tooth and nail to to keep how from resurrecting. But the Patch tribe has failed because resurrected na si how at the time. And yun pala meron din palang iniwan na Lineage, the bloodline si Houdon sa Patch Tribe his direct descendant there is Silva si, si Silva mismo ang nagsabi so this further complicates the storyline but it makes the storyline more exciting kasi imagine having this kind of a twist oi episode 25 next week We'll be capping off the first half of Shaman King 2021's run. Tandaan nyo, 52 episodes ito. So, kumbaga... Naka... Yeah. Naka-anin na po na tayo. <laughs> Starting next week. So... I feel accomplished because... I've gone through reviewing the entire first half. Oh, uh, not... not hindi pa naman kasi wala pa episode 26 eh. So, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. You should be looking forward to mga ka-lifestyle. So, again, Shaman King 2021, episode 25. style enjoy the other reviews in this digest we picked up where we left off from um, episode 14 of Sotsu Rika finally um, decides well that She's she, she's probably had enough of the bloodshed, the uh, the gory killings. Just she just throws uh, throws the sword uh, over the lake and starts well starts punching away at Sato. So yeah, 
you guessed it guys it eventually ended up in a fist fight pero ang sinasabi pa lang miracle ni Hanyo ay yun well uh, we all saw in the episode that uh, the sword uh, onigari no Ryu uh, sank to the bottom of the of the river no kaya pala gumanon si Hanyo She was actually calling the sword to her. Ayun, nakuha niya. And, um, I don't know why Iwa would still laugh at this. It's the legendary sword of Oyashiro-sama. And Hanyu has it. Well, after, um, three episodes of being humiliated by, by Iwa, Hanyu kills her. Technically, nagkaroon ng lamad dito yung sa yung ring band yung yung ring band ni uh, ni Iwa it turned her into a child and so with that she was sent into the uh, into eternal nothingness Hanyu wins so going back to the fist fight which um Ended in a draw. <laughs> Funny thing. Ended in a draw. So, e- eventually, well, they returned to, uh, they probably returned to the loop that, uh, that we ended up with during the final three episodes of season one. Nung saan eh, mga binata, del- mga binatilot dalagita na silang lahat. So, they, uh, Hinahanap pa na sila nila Keiji. And uh, Keiji just saw up. Uh, Uy! Ba't nagkaganyan na mga damit nyo? Eh, well, uh, Rena and Mion quickly deduced na nagkaroon ng matinding away ang dalawang to. <laughs> That's an understatement. So, hindi nagpansinan hanggang sa nagsakay na sa kotse. Being, uh, being the, the best friends that they are, Rena, Mion, and Keiji shed light on what friendship should be. And, well, syempre, kasi ito ang tatlong, pinakamat- ito ang tatlong pinakamatatanda sa barkada. So, uh, Rika and Sato all just had to listen. And eventually, yeah, they thought, they're right. So, nag-holding hands na lang yung mag-best friend. I guess they patched things up right there. So, Well, uh, obviously, tanggap na ni Sato ko that Rika is going to uh, is going to middle school somewhere. And tanggap na rin ni Rika na Sato ko wants to stay in Hinamisawa. So, when Rika was about to board the train going to Tokyo, of course, to St. Lucia Academy, And, well, iniwan silang, iniwan silang dalawa ng mga, ng tatlo, si Myon, Rena, at si Keiji. And, dun, lumabas yung mga looper eyes nila. Sinabi nila sa isa't isa, We're, We are going to definitely go our separate ways so that we won't grow tired of each other. Well, basically, probably, they're saying na, talaga maghiwalay sila ng das para hindi sila magpatayan <laughs> uli. So, ayun na. Yun na naging pangako nila sa isa, isa. That they will stay, oh, well, that, something to that effect, they will now start to stay away from each other. Tuloy ang buhay sa, ina, sa Hinamisawa. Then, uh, while Satoko, Shion, And uh, Pepe were talking about having a uh, sukiyaki party at the at the Hojo household. Satoko just went. Okay, I am releasing yourself. I am now turning yourself over to you. Gumano na lang siya. Bumalik siya sa pagkabata and did this. <laughs> Why do I still find that laugh creepy? <laughs> But uh, yun nga, yeah, siguro right there and then, uh, tanggap na ni Sato ko na 
uh, Rika wants to uh, make it on her own and siguro bilang bilang best friend niya she has to accept that and tinanggap naman din ni Rika na she wants to say in Misawe so the feeling should be mutual kung baga ganun final scene uh, the camera now veers to uh, to the um, to the Furude temple and we now see Hanyu there uh, all smiles hmm we can deep dive into that let's break this finale down ARD style pace well the pace started slowing down when Hanyu finally defeats Iwa with that uh, with uh, Onigari no Ryu uh, the, the very sword Oyashiro Sama created. Di kaya si Hanyo mismo si, Oya, si Oyashiro Sama. Hmm. Pashone figured that if we slow the pace down from here, maybe we could give the audience a uh, a diff an entirely different feel of the entire Higurashi franchise. I felt that way. Kasi it all just boiled down to a fist fight between Rika and Sato. Well, the, during uh, during the last episode, they they weren't killing each other. It's uh, a bloodbath that transcended time, space, uh, different realities, different loops. That was how serious the fight was, and siguro hindi na hindi na mahanap ni Rika yung ano yung sorry eh. Itabo mo bala mga Then you started, then you started um, turning Sato's face into a into a sponge. <laughs> so, just goes to show you how well the versatility of the reboot. That's what the pace will make you realize. And uh, ang dami ng ano eh, ang dami ng nadamay sa away nilang dalawang sa away nilang dalawa. Paulit, ulit na lang na pinapatay sila. Keiichi, Rena, Myon, Sean, everyone in Hinamisawa actually. All throughout the original series and of course the reboot. Talagang endless ang violence. Endless ang... Ang, um, ang disturbing endings. And probably... Um, we can say the Pashone has had enough. And they just boiled down to this final conflict to a fist fight and eventually they uh they kiss and made up as if uh well totally unaware naman yung ibe so talagang sila sato ko at rika lang ang ang nakakalam kung anong tunay na nangyari so the pace was just right flow naman first gear shift was of course when um the opening scene when I decided to throw that sword and just just swing at Otto Satoko with all her might. Bye, Otto now the gear shift. Simply lang. Because that now gives Hanyu a chance to defeat Iwa. Kung hindi tinapon ni Rika yon, wala. Hanggang ngayon siguro, hinihiya pa rin ni, ni, ni Iwa si Hanyu. Talk about a stroke of pure luck. Ito pala yung sinasabing milagro ni Hanyu. <laughs> and it came from, wow, from such convenient timing. That's why I called it a gear shift. Second gear shift was when, um, was during the pep talk, Satoko and Rika had in that car. No, yeah, in explain nila Rena, Keiichi at Mion on what friendship should be. So, kasi well, from Mion's point of view, it's total experience kasi naghiwalay na sila ng dust ng kanyang kakambal na si Sean. Kasi si Sean um, has other plans in her life. So, she totally accepts that. Eh, yun nga sinabi ng ni Mion. Even family drift apart. So, why should not friends? Kahit 
malayo kayo sa, malayo kayo sa isa't isa. Ito naman ang, uh, pala, ito pala ang point of view ni KG. Kahit malayo kayo sa isa't isa, magkaibigan pa rin kayo dahil yung pinagsamahan nyo nandun pa rin. I only translated it in Filipino. It's, well, he's got a point on that. He's got a point. Kahit, um, mga ibang eskwela na si Rika, I'm sure, Satoko will still be her best friend. And she totally said, and she totally concurred with that when she, when she boarded that train to St. Lu- Lucia. Na, ayun nga, sinabi nga, lang, sinabi lang nila sa isa't isa that they will, that they'll now start to stay away from each other in order for them to to not grow tired of each other. That's a gear shift. If that ain't a gear shift to you, I don't know what will. Kasi, um, that pep talk made Rika and Sato all realize that you don't have to be lovers just to, just to, just to solve this. Eh, ngayon, well, eh, the episode really showed us that uh, once you're a looper, you'll always be a looper. Kaya, yung pagka-looper nila sa ato at Rika, hindi na natanggal yun. Kahit, um, Hanyo's finally uh, figured out a way to um, to release Hinamisawa of its curse, technically. So, final gear shift was when Satoko finally released herself from probably from her looping abilities gumanon lang siya and bumalik yung yung childhood form niya ayun yun na siya ngayon isa lang ibig sabihin niyan para sa akin that Satoko's status as a looper is now over kumaga She's totally surrendered her um, her status as a looper to to Hira, to Oyashiro sama and she want she just she just wants to live a life so proverbially yung childhood form niya ang nakita natin pero in reality dalagita na rin siya kasi um nag nag Saint Lucia na si ano eh si Rika nang hindi siya kasama eh pero pero na silang dalagito no when they both entered that school so kumbaga uh, proverbially yun na ang demeanor niya yung nung bata siya yun ang demeanor niya ngayon sa nung ngayon na dalagito na siya simple lang dahil lang ako bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to because it formally ended the franchise or well uh, if not uh, this season alone pero hindi na makakaulit siguro Higurashi with this gear shift from Satoko so these three gear shifts I tell you guys it defined the finale and the final gear shift I felt the franchise ending right there Plot-wise, malinis. Because yung uh, kung tututukan yung episode to from start to finish, may continuity. May continuity na sinusunod ang finale na to. Don't get distracted by uh, those fragments or uh, or even the battle between uh, Hanyo and Iwa. Kasi ang main continuity ng episode to ay yung away nila Satoko at Rika. So don't get confused mga ka-lifestyle. The, the, the fight between Iwa and Hanyo just supplemented this finale. Kasi kung eh, habang kasi nag-aaway sila Satoko at uh, Rika, um, This was probably uh, the miracle Hanyo was mentioning. Ayun nga, yung tinapon na ni <laughs> tinapon na ni Rika yung espada which eventually fell into Hanyo's hands. Kaya niya natalo si Iwa. Kaya. 
kaya malinis pa rin yung plot. Ando pa rin yung main continuity ng finale. Which is the um, which is the fight between Rika and Satoko, which transcended realities basically, <laughs> which uh, sent us to different endings, different beginnings, different side stories, different backstories, or whatever whatever shit Higurashi has thrown us uh, all this time. That's what the plot will make you realize. Yeah, malinis ang plot ng episode na to. So, base, flow, and plot, they all came together for the finale of the Higurashi reboot, at least. But if you ask me, mga lifestyle, this franchise is over. Talagang, wala na siguro susunod dito. Because, uh, the final scene where ha- Hanyu was already smiling, It means that the way I see it, Oyashiro Sama is now sleeping and the curse is gone. The curse has been broken. So, for the final time, Higurashi 2020 series finale. I got something to confess, Mahanga Lifestyle. I almost gave this the one thumb up. <laughs> Kasi nung, uh, nung Rika preferred to to just punch Satoko's lights out, nung tinapan niya yung sword, I thought, what kind, what kind of ending are we going to have? Uh, uh, teka, ano klaseng ending na ngayon ang, ang mahihita ko rito? But, Pasione broke the norm in this finale. Kasi, all it took for the eternally damning war between Satoko and Rika, which is, which, which is being supplemented by Oyashiro Sama's curse. All it took to end it all was a pep talk from their friends. Si Rena, si Keichi, at Simeon. And I thought, hmm, finally, the violence will end. Finally. Um, if this is the way uh, the Higurashi franchise will end, okay lang. Kasi, <laughs> original man or reboot, we have been subjected to to mental and psychological trauma countless times yeah it's and Pasione found siguro they found it's high time to um to end this on uh just this kasi kung titignan nyo nagsimula lang ito sa simpleng away bata all of this The entire reboot, at least. <sighs> Because, well, Rika wanted to share her dreams with Satoko. Satoko wants none of that and wants to stay in Hinamisawa. Ah, and all it took was a pep talk from Rena, Keiji, and Mion. Sige na nga, tatanggapin ko. <laughs> yeah. Talagang, uh, talagang, uh, change of scenery for, uh, for us Igorashi fans. That, uh, ang simpleng away bata na to, na-resolve lang sa isang pep talk. Now, if you still want to, if you still want uh, Rika and Satoko to go at it, in your dreams <laughs> so to Studio Pasione thank you for giving us a great reboot it's totally different from the original series kumaga 
thank you for making us reimagine the Higurashi storyline and to Higurashi for me you're still one of the greatest horror franchises of all time kaya okay lang sa akin yung ganong ending talagang I felt uh, I felt uh, I felt closer there so for the final final time Higurashi 2020 series finale this starts another mic drop So, well, well, I need the teaser because it's done. Here's what you must do, Maha Lifestyle. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Uh, the episode started auspic- rather auspiciously because Nagara and Mizuho were um, going through their somewhat new lives like nothing happened the first one to actually recollect their entire drifting journey was Nagara uh, niya si Miss Ho dun sa school niya. Uh, and binati niya uh, so said sino ka so nagulat si Nagara so he thought then uh, a few flashback scenes uh, came about uh, while they were in this uh, capsule. They were already preparing to to get back into this world. So, what are they doing? The mountain climbers na lubid, yun, parang ganun, they strapped themselves into that. They're hooked onto each other. So, they sila sa capsule and they started uh, just walking in this ano siya, parang it, lo- it looks a lot like limbo parang uh, different realities coming together yeah ganun uh, ganun itura so while they were walking Asakasi stops them uh, well simply binil- binalita lang niya ang mga nangyari sa mga iba pa lang kasama si Rashdani He's now a forest and he's taking care of the animals. Aki has also died. Mm. Should we celebrate? Anyway. <laughs> and um, I think the rest of the um, the graduates of uh, of her cult joined Hoshi. So basically, Asakasi said, there's nothing left for me here. Do you still want to go back to our world? Well, Nagara said, uh, in the simp, in vintage Nagara fashion, we'll be fine. Gano'n din na sinabi ni Miso. So, pinabayan na sila ni Asakase. But before he did that, may binigay pa siyang isa pang compass kay Nagara. So, I think that was the one Nosomi gave him. So, sabi ni Nagara, hmm. We use this. So, in the na sila ni Asakase, and they started running. While they were while they were running, naglalag behind na si Miso. Then some uh, force of divine providence tinulongan sila ni Asakase. At yung magkahawa kamay na sila na, nagara at Miso. And they were already at the entrance to this world. What made you decide to go back? Pinakita ni Nagara na in his hand the, or the two compasses. Uh, yung isa, yung binigay sa kanya ni uh, binigay ni Nosomi kay, sa kanya at kay, kay Asakase respectively. He just said, this is the light Nosomi saw. So, eh, hindi na umimik si Meiso. Hindi na nangyayilaw. And poof, they're back in the um, in their original world. 
Tiyan na kayo ulitin na na nakausapin si Miso Eh, ayun Eh Natatandaan pala lahat ni Miso ko So, nag-usap sila In a, in a park And uh, They just simply agreed that Well, they can't change the world But uh, Something to this effect They will make their own future So, they parted ways And parting shot May, may parting shot pa nga si, no, kay, si Miso ko kay Nagara Whatever is left of the you that was in on uh, Ateno Island yung, yung pala ang pangalan ng island na, na tinirhan nila nun All throughout this anime Whatever is still there that was on uh, Ateno Island is, If you still have that, you'll be fine So, ngiti na lang si Nagara um, Final scene Well, he was deeply concerned over this uh, this bird's nest na dinadaanan niya tuwing uuwi siya and chinek niya uy but w- wala nang wala na yung mga ano nito yung mga mga chikiting yung pala kinuha ni Nozomi yes buhay pa si Nozomi yay Uh, she decided to take care of it Pero Medyo nakikilala na siya ni Nagara But um, I don't know why Nagara didn't um, Fulfill his promise to Nosami Right there uh, Porque well, uh, While they were talking Yung supposedly Well uh, it's, it's obvious May boyfriend na si, no- si Nosami So tinawag siya ng boyfriend niya And well, Nagara simply walked out of there And his parting shots for us, for all of us, were it's a quiet end to probably one of the wildest animes I've seen in a long time. And this was done by Madhouse. All right, this is, you all, well, we all know that this is a Madhouse original. So, you know how Madhouse operates when it comes to, uh, when it comes to his original content. <laughs> It'll leave you thinking that I got talagang mapapat deep dive fest ang mga original works ng Madhouse well Sunny Boy is no exception so for the final time let's break this episode down ARD style pace well from the get go slow on pace not exactly uh, it's not exactly bad for this anime kasi it's been a wild ride since episode 1 Medyo and tumon down na nung finale dito. So, it's quite a change of pacing pero personally I welcome it because finally um, the main protags have have returned to their original world. They're now leading lives and to some point they've already improved on it. Lalo na si Nagara. He used to be a uh, used to be a lazy ass dude. Now, well, he's got a part time job. So after school, mm, may work siya. So you can say that um, I think uh, the drifting journey has uh, has changed Nagara somewhat. He now knows. Well, this is what the pacing has uh, has made me realize just now. The entire journey has just made uh, has made Nagara into a, a more productive person. Well, because when he started the anime, na to, talagang, he's he's lazy as fuck, and he's a real pacifist. Talagang, okay, sige, okay, sige, okay lang, sige. Kaya nang mentality niya. Until uh, and as the episodes go by, he started asserting himself, well, especially when it comes to Nosomi. The pacing of this episode is slow but totally acceptable kasi uh, as the viewer you really need uh, a break so this this finale yeah that's the break you needed kasi ang wild talaga ang wild talaga na maganda uh, yung previous 
uh, 11 episodes ng anime na to. So yeah, we do need a break. And this finale is perfect for it. No complaints. No complaints. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when uh, Nagara uh, met Mizuho again for the first time. Okay, the first time he met uh, Mizuho again in this finale. Nagtaka talaga si Nagara kung bakit hindi na siya kilala ni Mizuho. Kasi sabay lang naman silang pumasok pabalik eh. So, he was really trying to figure out what happened. So, nag backtrack siya to those yeah, to those uh, to that uh, to that flashback scene what what what, what really happened so as the viewer you would find nothing wrong kasi they were actually waiting for their moment to to get back into the real world this world so wow well, uh, if you could see the capsule talaga it's it's a cramped space I don't know how they were able to live in that space. May, lo- may lutuan pang hindi pa malinis to. <laughs> wow. Talagang um, after, after after all they've been through, hindi siya kilala ni Miso. So if if I were Nagara, I would I would take the same thing. Hoy. What does this gear shift tell us? Well, if you look at it this way, ang dami bang pwedeng mangyari. Hindi porket um, pabalik ka na sa totoong mundo mo, eh wala na mangyayari sa'yo because they're still in transition. They are literally in limbo. Kaya, yung appearance bigla ni Asakase, that's unexpected. Yung appearance ng yung matanda na sa wheelchair, na parang, parang kontrabida rin ang dating eh. They, he too tried to stop Nagara and Misoho from going back but sinabi nila pareho we'll be fine yeah, that was unexpected also so ang dahil pang pwede mangyari talaga itong ang kinosumi eh buhay siya but um, she doesn't seem to remember Nagara just goes to show you how uh, how uncertain the next chain of events uh, were to be in this anime. Yeah, yun lang sinasabi ng gear shift na to. Now, um, final gear shift, dalawa lang yun, was when Miso finally uh, told Nagara that, that she knows him. Okay, kasi ngayon kasi yung lumalabas ngayon na talagang best friend ni Nagara ay si Miso. Kasi sila, sila lang talaga yung natira sa team Nagara eh. Well, Rajdani got turned into a forest and Nosomi uh, has been presumed dead until now in which she doesn't remember Nakara. Yun ang masakit mo kay Nakara. But what does this gear shift tell us? Well, just goes to show you that the, the drifting journey was real because both of them remember. And but, but, And I don't think Nosomi remembers anymore because, well, she died two episodes ago. So, in likelihood, wala na siya, matanda, wala na siya maalala. So, uh, that, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Imagine if she still remembers and she suddenly sees Nagara. Kilig mo, Benjur, mga ka-lifestyle. These two gear shifts that I saw, it practically defined the finale. If not the entire anime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's continue. Plot wise, planchado. Because, well, you gotta understand, the main continuity of the entire anime. Uh, suddenly shifted gears here. Kumaga, uh, it has signaled to us that Mizuho and Nagara have finally returned to the normal world. To the normal plane of reality. Yeah, to be, uh, to be specific. You need 
a plot this swell iron out to make the viewer understand kasi may flashback scene now uh, tama ang call ng madhouse dito because there will be some viewers that will uh, that will start watching uh, this finale clueless as fuck kasi well, so, 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 sabihin nila ha? Huh? so paano sila nakarating dito? the flashback scene which was the only um, side story in the finale it's the only side story that matters diba? kasi nearly everybody wants to know how they how they got back here now you'll feel happy for both Mizuho and Nagara and even Nosomi kahit wala na siya maalala pero uh, well, anyway pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode so I really do not know why Nagara did not um, follow through on on their mutual prom on his mutual promise with Nosomi. Bakit? Hmm. We're gonna talk about that later, but for now, let's rate it. So, Sunny Boy finale. deep dive into uh, into Nagara's final actions for this uh, for this anime I really don't Tika. siguro uh, if you could uh, put yourself in Nagara's shoes if you tell Nosomi what has happened baka masakit to eh kasi kung sasabi mo sa kanya na namatay siya doon sa mundong yon, she might not take it very well. Eh nakita naman ni Nagara that may boyfriend na siya eh. So yeah, he he's he's hot. He's happy for her. He's happy for Nosomi. And siguro tingin niya na happy naman si Nosomi. So why should I spill the beans on her? Let's just, siguro, kaya siguro sa sarili niya. Let's just keep the current Nosomi at that. Hayaan mo lang na siya ang, uh, siya ang makaalala sa lahat. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's probably what, uh, what went through Nagara's mind at that moment. Hayaan mo lang na makaalala na lang ng kusa sino sa mi so I guess you, we can now say that um, Nagara has been in love with Nosomi pwede kasi inaalala niya yung welfare ng babae and well pagdating yung parting shot yun sa finale si Nagara our lives are only beginning what lies ahead will take just a little bit longer he's got a point because um, they're all teenagers so in reality their lives are only beginning yeah well there's still uh, there's still a big future ahead of us so uh, he'll probably let Nosomi uh, remember everything herself Yeah. party shot talaga ni Nagara rito eh. So one that you should take into heart mga lifestyle actually. Yeah. Oy. Mukhang uh minatutunan na naman tayo kay Nagara. <laughs> so um thank you Madhouse for giving us this anime. Uh your signature is all over this anime kaya it, animation and story wise pero story wise galing uh, I hope you 
would uh, come out with uh, more original content like this. Talagang uh, miss ko ang content yung ganito. Not since ano pa um, Perfect Blue. Yan. Pero I'm sure it's, I'm sure man, I was going to come up with another original anime. <laughs> they've been they've been in the business since 1972, so they know. Uh, They know a thing to when it comes to anime original content. So again, thank you, Sunny Boy, for giving us a great run. It's probably one of yeah. It's definitely one of the best animes this year. Ma papa deep dive ka talaga sa anime nato. So again, Sunny Boy finale. This is another mic drop. So, what are you gonna do next, mga ka lifestyle? Simply lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Well, picked up where the last episode uh, left off. So, nasaksak nga si Ryuhi ni Rena. Pero, forced the issue. Uh, embraces Rena. And Rena snaps out of it. So, wow, Ryuei is in really bad shape. So, sinabi lang ni Ryuei, "Omayon na kayo at pigilan yung desaryang yan si Chutulog." Technically, pala Chutulog is Rena's desarya. So, so the one who led the attack was Rena herself. So, you know. She she has this power pala of uh kumaga of uh raising buildings using buildings as weapons kumaga yun yun ang ginamit niya so to um to up the ante against this desarya si Chutulog so what this was uh going on um Ryuhei sank into a uh, a dreamlike state wherein he's in his brother's room And ayun, sinalubungan siya ng kuya niya, si Junpei. At hindi nga, sa so unang hindi siya maniwala na si Junpei mismo to. It's not the hierarch. Uh, until, yun nga, na, naniwala na siya na kaluluwa mismo ng kuya niya to. And sinabi ni Junpei na, the only way for me, for my soul to be released from from all of this is to kill me. So, Noong una, ayaw pa ba yung si, si Ryuhei. But eventually, Junpei showed him the way by tapping him to that, uh, kung mga nahulog siya sa parang pool. And all of a sudden, while uh, all the knockups were being defeated by Chutulog, he suddenly, uh, while uh, Chutulog is about to deliver the final blow to Rena, pak! he suddenly reappears as a knocker up. And wow, a white-haired knocker up. He was able to save Rena. Binigyan niya, uh, pinobayan na niya si Rena kay, kay, uh, kay Eri. So, oh, he proceeds to engage in Chutulog all by himself. Then, uh, may naalala si Rando that if, uh, if a desire can... Uh, can transmit energy from other desarya so can knock her ups so sinabi niya kay Ryuhei Ryuhei gamitin mo na mga astral bodies namin para matalo mo yan of course una object si Ryuhei but eventually he gave in to to uh, Rando's wish o sige gamitin ko na rin then while while this is going on Tris comes back With the other, with the, with the other Urashima knocker ups and dabe, so sinabi ni Tris, ipahiram yung mo na mga actual bodies yung Ryuhei. So ayun ginawa. Wow, Ryuhei is now even stronger than Chutulog. Through, uh, through all their actual bodies, including his own, even his, uh, his older brother's spirit, 
Ryuhei finally kills Chotolog. Binutas yung katawan dito. <laughs> And wow, it was a really satisfying moment. The aftermath came. Um, Shibuya was a... Shibuya now looks like a war zone. So sinabi na lang ng mga ibang nakakorups, yep, this is for the better. And um, sabi nila Randon Eru, Let's go back, guys. Eh, they were talking to the other Urashima knocker ups, and Tris eventually decided to go back to Urashima with them. Because, what he said, he said, "As a parting shot, the fight here in Shibuya isn't over, but the fight in Urashima isn't over, also. So, it's hard to keep universal order in a uh, in uh, in check." So, uh, na-realize na lang nila Ryuhei na inumaga na pala sila. Final scene. It was actually a post-credit. Ano to? Huwag mong sabihin si Morase na ang magiging hierarch. Mukhang tama ang sinabi ni Tris dito. That the evil ones will always find a way to 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 get into our world to do their uh, to do their Uh, to do whatever they please in order for them to get back into this world. Mukha nagkakat- mukha nagkatotoo na yung sinabi ni Tris. Ayan, post-credit scene. Looks like Morrissey will not be the new hierarch. Ano to? <laughs> Is this a sign that uh, this anime will be back for another season? 70%. So let's break this episode down, ARD style. Pace. Well, it has been tense nearly all throughout this episode. Kumbaga, the first two thirds of it at least. Talagang uh, a roller coaster of emotions. And uh, if you also factor in Ryuhei's moral dilemma. Nakadagdag sa tense pacing ng episode na to. But, who's complaining? It's, it's the kind of pacing fit for a finale. So, I got no complaints. How about you guys? Flo naman. First gear shift here was when uh, Rena decided to uh, to lead the attack herself. Kasi, uh, na-realize ng, la- ng lahat ng knocker-ups that Chutulog is Rena's disarya. So, wow. Simply wow. Talagang Rena has showed uh, the leader side of her. Kasi down si Ryuhei. So, who else to take up the slack? Of course it's her. Total, she's holding herself accountable for this for this particular disarya, si Chutulog. This is actually a soldier of the evil ones. And to think that this is Rena's disarya. Oh, so because I'm sure ni Rena, ako lang mahakapigil dito. So I'm going to lead off the attack. This gearship will also tell you that Rena is is now being assertive of herself, considering the fact that Ryuhei is down, at mukhang nasa bigit na ng kamatayan si Ryuhei. So. She took it upon herself to take up the slack. Wow. If you couldn't... Well, I call this a character development gear shift. I don't know about you guys. Second gear shift was when Ryuhei fell into a dreamlike state. Na, yun nga, nagkita sila uli ng kapatid. Yung mismong kapatid niya, yung totoo, ah, yung totoo. Yung kaluluwa. This can also be called a character development gear shift for Ryuhei. Bakit? Because his older brother has assured him that he will be fine once he kills this Desaria. Kasi dito naka-encase mismo yung kaluluwa ni Junpei. If he, if Yui kills this with his own bare hands, makakalaya na ang kapatid niya. At first, uh, Ryuhi wouldn't agree. Ito yung moral dilemma na sinasabi ko sa inyo mga ka-lifestyle. Kasi, uh, the hierarch has taken over Junpei and through and 
the hierarch is also inside Chatulok's body. So the only way talaga for Junpei to be released of this this curse he's in is for Ryuhei to kill him. So I also call this a character development gear shift. Final gear shift was when Ryuhei finally kills Chatulog with his bare hands. Isang punch lang to the abdomen, lusot siya. Patay ang Chutulog. It was a really satisfying gear shift. Probably the most satisfying gear shift of this anime. <laughs> you couldn't be happier for Yue. Kasi, you can also call this a character development gear shift for Ryuhei. Kasi, he's totally gotten over that hump of, um, of being in his brother's shadow. He's now his own man. You can you can conclude that as such because of this gear shift. So these three gear shifts that I saw, probably the three most important gear shifts of this anime. Kasi nagkaroon ng major character development si Rena rito, and Ryuhei has experienced two character development moments here. So you can now say that Ryuhei is the leader of the Shibuya Knocker Ups, dahil uh, Tris has decided to um, to to go back to Yurashima Muna to to guide the Knocker Ups there. So who to take up the slack now? Ryuhei. Yen lang. <laughs> Plot wise, malinis. Bakit? Even though it has a dream se- a sort of dream sequence, the main continuity of the episode is still being followed. The dream sequence is actually part of the main continuity. Kasi nandito pinaka character development ni Ryuhei. In order for him to 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 totally eliminate this uh this desaria, this particular desaria. Kasi alagad mismo ng evil ones ito. So, that's what the plot will make you realize. <laughs> Need I say more? So, base, flow, and plot. <laughs> they all come, they all came together to give us probably one of the best finales this summer. Need I say more again? <laughs> So, this I drama the animation finale. That was a really satisfying. Finale. Uh, wow, talagang one of the most satisfying finales of the year. And to think that this anime is based on a computer game, it gave us moments like, um, yung hindi nila na save na member ng na dating member ng church na pinalit dito sa ulo. Yeah, that was a pivotal moment in this anime. That was hard to watch, actually. And of course, the, this finale, talagang. Wow. One of the best finales this year. Sabi ko sa inyo. And to think, again, that this anime is based on a computer game. <laughs> uh, animes based on PC games don't get this much um, deep dives from me. Talagang pure entertainment value, but... This I dominate the animation is totally different. Ako na nagsasabi sa inyo. After reviewing all 13 episodes, kakaiba ang ang game anime na to. Kakaiba talaga siya. I wouldn't be surprised if Sansigen gives this anime uh, another season. Maganda yung sinimulan ng anime na to. So, 
Thank you, Sansijen, for giving us this anime. Uh, I didn't like the 4 dj but I totally like this one. So... So what do we do now, Mahalai's Diving? Sing Pina. Enjoy the other reviews in the Spinal Digest for Volume 1. Well, it's now the Luke Man versus the Yuga Man. The Yuga Man started chipping away at the Luke Man's life points. The moment na nag transform siya, nag transform si Yuga into the Yuga Man. So, uh, he introduces a new Ace Monster. Of course, he activates this if this card effect we're in. Uh, him and his opponent should draw the same card as in the same card if not he takes 1000 damage at 200 life points na lang siya kasi naka nakabawi rin si Luke man sa successive uh, uh, rallies ni, ni Yuga man and uh, I don't know if Neil can call this Providence, but a meteor just hit uh, the Yuga Man's dual disc. While all of this is happening, Yo on the sidelines is absolutely going bonkers <laughs> because he finds the dual, um, what you call this, uh, a joke. It's not amusing. It's, I don't know what. I don't know what this psycho kid's point is, alright, but basta, <laughs> he's, um, he is beside himself of this, uh, about this duel. The meteor hit the Yuga Man's dual disc. Then, ayon, to, he proceeds to resolving the effect. Nabuno niya, pak, fusion. <laughs> so, now, the Yuga Man can fusion someone. He proceeds to fusion summoning his new ace, Seven's Paladin. Same uh, effect, same ang effect niya as to the original Seven's Old Magician. The Yuga Man needs to draw para mag-activate siya. So, nag-draw. Pero, yung pag-count ng attributes, hindi, la hindi lang ngayon sa graveyard ni Yuga Man. It can now also count the attributes in the opponent's graveyard. Eh, at this point, Nasa field pareho yung dalawang fusion monster ni Luke Man. Nabunin ni Yuga Man yung kailangan niya attribute para talagang mag, mag full circle ang effect. He drew an earth monster which was required. So yun, Seven's Paladin gains uh, at least 2,400 attack. So, kaya naging 5-3 ang attack. So, and much like Dragostar F, it can also attack twice. So, battle phase he destroys both. Well, Yuga Man destroys both monsters. Talo si Luke Man. And, wow. Gusto pang mandaya si Yuho. Sinabi na niya, ay nako, sisirain ko na lang yung Rosdol Roman. Pero, teka, sabi. And, again, Divine Providence interferes. Kaizo rams into his ship, making him crash. <laughs> Ech, wow. Pinaligiran na siya ng Team 7s. Sabi ni Gakuto, as, a, as per agreement, release the restraints on the Rush Duel Robot now. So, uh, he's got no choice. He releases all the restraints and Rush Duels is now safe. Nagpaala na rin si Luke, man. Nabit, well, as a, uh, what you call this, siguro, a token of gratitude, he releases Luke. So, Luke is back into the fold. And sabi ni, ni Luke man, thank you, Yuga Odo. So and he now flies into space, into the yeah, into the nothingness of space. Pero sinabi niya ng ako sa sa Team Sevens that if they ever need his help, he will be there. Yun ang final scene. It was a really wild episode. <laughs> God damn it! 
I've never seen an episode that wild since um since JX. Let's just break this episode down, ARD style. All right, pace. Umpisa pa lang ng episode, ang tense na ng pacing. Ang nag-o-augment pa rito yung, yung mga sideline shenanigans ni Yuho. Talagang nararamdaman na niya that, uh, uh, that the Luke man's loss is near. Talagang, uh, you, you can actually see it in his, uh, in his actions and both in his face. In that, in that, uh, in that pathetic face of his. Talagang... His um uh well his antics in the sidelines it's it's just delay, delaying the inevitable and that's what the pacing will make you realize. Natural bottom line if there's a duel in a Yu-Gi-Oh episode the the pacing is always tense at least for uh for that part of the episode pero dito all throughout the episode the the pacing was both tense and wild grabe flow naman well first gear shift here was when um i actually only saw two the first one was when yuga as the yuga man uh, was able to uh, to get back into the duel na labawasan niya ng labawasan niya ng story life points ni luke man and he also introduced this uh, probably his new monsters yeah so to speak and wow uh, talagang uh, talagang space warrior yung tema <laughs> why did I call this a gear ship? Yeah, simply lang cause the main protag is now back in the duel they're now evenly matched both uh, both com- both duelists and Final gear shift was when, you know, when that meteor struck uh, the Yuga man's uh, dual disc. Why did I call this a gear shift? Again, simply lang. It was the turning point of the entire episode. Yuga was the Yuga man was going for broke when he activated that card. Because uh, to begin with, wala naman siya fusion sa deck, so. Natural. He's going to draw the. He's going to draw. He's not going to draw the same card. Eh, ang nabonat ni Lokman Fusion. So he, yeah, yeah, he's going to push. He still proceeded with the with resolving the effect. Then, the meteor came and hit him. And the despite getting hit by that meteor, he still was able to resolve the effect. Ayon, Fusion ang nabonat niya. It was a really satisfying gear shift. <laughs> because now the main protag has fusion. Ooh. These two gear shifts that I saw, the last one will definitely play a role in future episodes, not just in this one. Kasi ang main protag meron na siyang fusion. It's not just uh, the Luke Man anymore or even you. So. I would expect a another uh, Yuga versus Yu duel here. Yuga versus Yu too. Mohang. I can really feel it in my bones that uh, it's going to happen. Yung uh, yung yung duel na yun. Yuga versus Yu too. Na talaga uh, Yuga suffered a, uh, a huge loss against Yuo when Fusion was introduced in this series. The last one was probably the wildest gearship I've ever seen in any anime. Now, plot-wise, Malinis. Kahit may kahit continuation ng dual scene, no? Look, teka muna mga kalahistahin, Malinis ang plot. Because, despite having a dual scene, yung main continuity ng episode we're in uh, if Yuga loses this one uh, Yuo now has every right to to uh, what you call this to to destroy the rush to a robot kaya ako nga eh, when I saw the episode talaga nakatutok ako if uh, and at that point where Yuga is the Yuga man is about to lose I thought Oh boy, 
Paano ka makakabunod ang fusion na wala ka namang fusion sa deck? Then, uh, a, a stroke of pure luck just hit him. Ayun, through that meteor. He finally has fusion. <laughs> Now, uh, if you've seen the episode, you'll probably say, Ang gago naman yan. Hello, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. It doesn't, uh, you can say, it's the Gintama of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> When it comes to um yeah, when it comes to wild episodes and fan service moments, hindi lang kukulang ang anime na to. The main continuity of this episode. Nalalang mapapa mapapadikit ka sa upuan mo eh. Yeah, you would really uh you would really uh watch this episode from start to finish even if you didn't watch the previous one. Because you're good to, uh, because you're good to root for Yuga. Oh, excuse me, the Yuga man. <laughs> so base flow and blood. I almost did not distinguish. I, I almost wasn't able to distinguish one from the other. That's how. Uh, that's how good this episode was. You get me, manga lifestyle, and lo and behold. Yoga Odo now has fusion in his deck and he is able to and he was able to introduce a new fusion monster. Oh, talagang, wow. Mukhang Fi5X si Seven's Old Magician sa monster na to, si Seven's Paladin. Yeah, it looks really good. Looks really good. Pero, teka. Does this mean we have a, uh, a new type in the Rush Duel format? Kasi, Uh, with the introduction of Dragon Star F a few episodes ago, nagkaro, nagkaro na ng bagong type, High Dragon. Ano to? High Spellcaster. We don't know yet. So, Yogio Sevens Episode 67. Patuloy ba kayo sip? Let's deep dive into the the future implications of this uh of this episode. Now, with uh, you all experiencing probably the sorriest loss of his life, even though he didn't duel in it, that that fucking piece of chicken shit. <laughs> um, sinabi rin ni Yuga rito, yeah, in this episode that. Oh, sige. Uh, I'll. I, I'll still take the win. Pero, naman pero eh. He actually demanded these conditions that the other Go siblings be reinstated, okay? And he's more than willing to become an employee of theirs. Much to the surprise of Team Sevens. But, um, I don't know if, uh, if that's a comic relief or not, pero, uh, well, You guys a kid of his word, so he, he'll probably be in Goya's employ from now on. But, um, siguro hindi pagbibigyan ni Yuyo ni Yuyo because um, Yuga can do to him what Neil did to him. Kung baga sa sakit na lang ere, ilalaglag siya. Oh well, well that, that's what Neil. That's exactly what Neil did. And uh, as a consequence, Neil might have lost a uh, Sebastian. Pero when it comes to Yuga, he's got nothing to lose, whether he becomes a Goa employee or not. He created Rush Duels, <laughs> so it's no loss to him. So, what does this mean now for the other characters of Sevens? Sa uh, sa style ng Konami. More likely, we will see other versions of fusion in future episodes that will be used by the other characters. Kasi, or they're going to introduce their fusion aces. But they'll probably use the same card, fusion. Pero it would be a lot cooler if, um, 
if the other characters of Sevens have their own uh, version of fusion, like ng katulad ng uh, uh, of Rains, uh, the Salaman Great deck has its own version of fusion, uh, fusion of fire, and and ano ba isa pa? oh, who could forget uh, GX? When super polymerization was introduced, the one used by uh, by the Hao, yung evil form ni Jude. Ah, that was a, that is a very memorable card, and up to now, it is still legal in real life tournaments. I would love to have that card. <laughs> it's because it's iconic already. It's not just um, a formidable card; it is also iconic in the anime. Because, wow, you are able to get an opponent's monster as fusion material when he least expects it. Kasi, quick play spell to. <laughs> Even in the opponent's turn, you can fusion summon. Does that sound cooler, one? <laughs> so, uh, it would be a lot cooler if... The uh, the other characters would get their own version of fusion. Yeah, yun ang maganda don. Ah, isa pang uh, babanggitin kong uh, version ng polymerization, which is it is called fossil fusion. Yung ginagamit ni Jim Crocodile Cook sa GX. Yeah, okay. it typically um, targets uh, rock monsters as fusion materials. Kaya nga fossil fusion ang pangalan. Talagang pangalan lang yata siya pang rock na na fusion card. That too is an iconic card. Ay, I've said enough. So, let's just wait for the Let's just wait for the next episode. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 67 deserves another mic drop. episode has been teasered <laughs> I really want to see the look on Yuo's face okay imagine but I don't want to trust the teaser pero imagine imagine in yung mga lifestyle you're gonna ha- you're gonna have one whole episode with Yuo having a long face <laughs> the scumbag has a long face <laughs> ah, that'll be a very satisfying episode <laughs> So, let's just do the drill maka lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode where you will start to cry. So, in the meantime, maka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Una una sa lahat. Welcome back, Yashahime! So, First third of the episode, ni recap yung final two episodes ng season one. So we all know, we all know what happened in the final two episodes. So nagkasagu pa yung uh, yung magpipinsan laban kay Kirin Maru. To summarize, napuro nila si Kirin Maru. Kirin Maru was forced to retreat, pero uh, tingin kasi ni Moro ha, this was a loss for them. I don't think so. But anyway, the final scene of that, uh, of the finale, shows Seshumaru giving the Tensaiga to, to Towa. Now, this is where the pilot of season 2 takes off. Kaya pala niya binibigay ito, baka sakali lang na, na mabuhay nila uli si Setsuna. And, what? Well, Talagang nag-effort dito si Towa. Giving it all her demon energy on that broken blade. Talagang nagkaroon bigla ng uh, kumbaga parang ng sariling blade ang Tensaiga. Pero medyo nag-waver siya dahil uh, may mga dumating na tao. Si, si Toto Sai, yung pinaka-blacksmith ng Tensaiga, dumating siyempre. Uh, he cares about the Tensaiga. It's his, uh, what you call this? 
it's his uh, obra maestra. So, eh, tinanong tinan nito ha, ano ni, ni Moro ha kung sino to. Eh, eh, Moro ha provides the only relief. Ngayon, sinabi lang ni Toto Sai na kailangan kailangan magawa kagad ni, ni Toto ito within the hour. Dahil, it gives, the, uh, the Tensaiga gives the wielder the ability to see demons. Ayun nga, nakita nga ni Toa, merong apat na maliliit na demon na kumukuha sa kaluluwa ni Setsu na. Oo. Eh, it's literally, those four are literally bringing her soul to the afterlife. So, talagang, nag-all out na si Setsu na sa, uh, sa si Toa pala, sa pag, sa pag-wield ng puto na Tensaiga. She was able to, uh, what you call this, to put it, put it to full length. Ayun. Isang laslasan lang, patay lahat ng demonyong kumukuha sa kalulungan ng kapatid niya. Then, while this was going on, Totosai was repairing Setsuna's spear. So, wow. By the time he was done with it, Super lakas. Super lakas na, na, na spear ngayon ng hawak ni Setsu na. Well, we all know what happened. If you haven't seen the ep- well, if you've seen the episode, we all know what happened. Buhay na si Setsu na and was able to wield the new spear. Isang ganun lang niya kasi may mga kumukumpul-kumpul na malilit na demons. Dahil may ginagawang bagong brain si Totosai. Eh, Moroha and Uh, Kirara tried to hold them all off, no. Pero, uh, na-outnumber sila rito until yun. Pa! Isang gano'n na lang ni Setsuna, patay lahat. <laughs> Exterminated! Moroha gave Setsuna the heads up. And, and, no, she was surprised. Namatay na pala ako? So, yun nga, sinabi ni Moroha, Toa was the one who brought you back. Toa projected so much demon energy into the broken Tensaiga na nangyayari yung, nangyari yung effect na kapag full moon, nanging, biglang mangingitim yung buhok niya. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Talagang na-use up lahat ng demon energy niya just to uh, bring the Tensaiga back to full length. And just to, to, to kill all those demons that were taking Setsuna away. Yan. Siyempre, nagpasalamat si Setsuna. Merong final instructions na iniwan si Totosai kila Setsuna at Moroha. That Toa needs to uh, needs to find a more suitable weapon for her. Kung hindi, the next time they go up against Kirin Maru, she will probably die. So, meron siyang parang sinabi na ano eh, parang herb na kailangang gamitin ni Toa para may laban siya uli kay Kirin Maru. And, meron din siyang instructions kay Setsuna. Do not die again. <laughs> Because the Tensaiga can only bring a person back to life only once. Eh, okay. <laughs> Pero, kung gusto mo talagang, sabi ni, ni Totosai, if you really want to master the, um, the, the new improve, the improvements I give your blade. Aba, eh, mag-training ka. Sabi niya, okay, sige. <laughs> so, final scene. Well, nag-alburuto si Moro, ha? At po ng final instructions sa kanya kay Totosai. <laughs> Na mula kay Totosai. Only the cow replied to her. <laughs> It's quite an auspicious pilot. So, let's break this all down AR this time. Face. Middle half of the episode tense. Bakit? Kasi, while Totosai was repairing Setsuna's spear, nag, nagsam, nag, ano eh, biglang may, nagsidatingan yung mga malilid na demon eh, para pigilan siya eh. Ganon to parate ang nangyayari sa kanya every time he either forges or repairs uh, a weapon of such magnitude. Nag, ganon kalakas. So, what? Monoha and Kirara had no choice but to, what, to fend off all, those de- all these demons. At saka, chef, hindi lang kay 
Totosay sila magiging sagaban, magiging sagaban din sila kay Towa. Who was trying her very best to revive Setsu na. So, wow, okay, it was really tense. Then, the pacing of the episode slowed down during uh, moments before the final scene. Kasi kung bibilisan yung ang pagsasalita ni Totosay dito, hindi natin maka-appreciate yung ano eh, yung um, the tasks that are up ahead for these three girls before they re, well, be, before they resume hostilities with uh, with Kirin Maru, of course. So, sakto lang yung pacing ng uh, ng season 2 pilot. Saktong sakto lang. And because they they had to uh, give the audience a uh, recap of what happened during the final two episodes of season 1. Importante rin yun. Kasi doon talaga magsisimula ang season 2. Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was um, was when Sesumaru told Toa to use the remaining the remaining part of the Tensaiga to revive Setsuna. Kasi alam niya na kaya ni Toa na gamitin ito. So, ayun, with all her might, okay, with practically all her demon energy, nagamit niya ang Tensaiga kahit putol na yun. Kah- kahit si Sumuru mismo nakaputol nun. So, I call that a gear shift because it's a, it's clear as day. Toa sees Setsuna as the only family she's got. Because they are, they are the daughters of Sesumaru. But, but, and I don't think based on this gear shift alone na hindi, niya, hindi pa niya talaga maituring na ama si Sesumaru. Because if she already treated Sesumaru as her father, which biological father nga nila, she would have called her father already. Ang tinatrato na niya talaga na, pa, na talagang pamilya ngayon ay si Setsuna. And well, probably the same. Probably Setsuna would agree with her kasi even Setsuna um, probably doesn't accept the fact that Sesumaru is her father. Kaya Sesumaru din ang tawag niya nun. Yeah, that's why I call it this, that's why I call this a gear shift. Second gear shift was Toto size arrival. Bakit? It's an explanatory. Because he was, kasi the moment na during episode 23 of season 1, dun na putol eh, ang Tensai ka. Naramdaman ni Toto sa yun. So by the time he came here in the season 2 pilot, ayun, tama, tama hinala niya. Ito yung putol na blade. Na, napulot pa nga niyang ganun. So, well, hindi na niya finigure out kung sino, kung sino nakaputol nito. It's, it's not other than Sesumaru himself. Before his daughters, only Sesumaru can wield the Tensaiga. Now, even Toa can use it. Kaya nga, eh, nung pagka, um, pagkagamit, na, pagkagamit ni Toa sa Tensaiga, yung nung nabuhay nung nabuhay na uli si Setsu na ipina ubaya na ni si Sumaru ang Tensai kay Toto Sai. Ano? Paki-repair naman. <laughs> Kung hindi dumating si Toto Sai at that moment, wala. Baka mabuhay man si Setsu na, baka napatay naman sila ng, ng ganito karami mga demonyo. You get me mga ka lifestyle. Final gear shift was of course Setsuna comes back to life and start, well, at the moment she came back to life, naibigay sa kanya ni Toto sa yung kanyang battles, uh, modified the spear, yun. With one swing, exterminated all the demons. Ganong alakas ngayon yun. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang. The team is back. Okay? So, need I say more? <laughs> These three gear shifts, that I saw in the pilot definitely will play uh, will play a role down this uh, down the line in season 2 
Lalo-lalo na yung part ng... Uh, hindi, pare-pareho lang eh. Pare-pareho lang. Because these three gear shifts will now give the girls something to work on during this entire course, during this entire season. Kaya, we'll just have to, we'll just have to watch the entire season too how, on how these three gear shifts will uh, will affect future episodes. Ganun lang yan. Plot lines. Malinis. Kasi, although, nag-recap ng final two episodes ng season one during the first third of the episode, dumiretso ka agad sa main continuity ng pilot. The plot wasn't broken at all. And you call you you cannot call that uh, an iron out plot kasi hindi naman utay-utay na ginawa eh yung pagre-recap sa for sa nakaraang season. Kumaga, um uh, recap lang nila yung final two episodes ng season 1 which is the most important one kasi they're going to they, they carried it over to the pilot of the of season 2. Kaya Malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for the pilot of season 2. Talagang, masasabi mo na, Welcome back, Yashahime! So, Yashahime, the second act, episode 1. Easy, easy, pag dila! Oh, two thumbs up! At na kaya lang, umpisa. This is how you start an Isekai series. More particularly, uh, a new season of it. Ganito dapat. Hindi yung... Uh, uh, kumbaga, after the fact na lang yung nangyari sa finale ng previous season. So talagang... Uh, ni ride on ng Sunrise ang ang kumaga success na they've had pinigibak nila ang storya ng pilot because well practically the girls are back to square one when it comes to Kirin Maru and yung instructions na binigay sa, kanya, sa kanila ni Toto Sai I think they're going to implement that right away based on the teaser ha, of the next episode pero that Eh, hindi ko mawawa na paniniwalaan yun. So, right now, what's important is the uh, the new season of the spin-off of one of the of probably the greatest Isekai anime ever is back. So, hmm, mukhang paninindigan na ng Yasha Kimi ang pagiging inaugural member ng Otaku 5 nila. So, Personally, uh, I'm glad it's back. Because all the other Isekai animes that have come out after season one ended, well, I, ang ang Isekai anime lang na talaga ng gusto ko after Yasha Hime was Tokyo Revengers. <laughs> Believe it or not, guys, Tokyo Revengers is an Isekai anime. Again, welcome back, Yasha Hime. So again, Yasahime the second act, episode one. Two thumbs up. First two thumbs up for the new season of this great anime of lifestyle. In typical Yasahime fashion, me teaser for the next episode. Pero, hindi ko mo naman iniwala. Jumbled din, parang jumbled din ang mga scenes eh. eh parang hindi siya in chronological order. So, Let's just do the drill, Maka Lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. First and foremost, welcome back, 86. We start off the pilot with a, uh, well, a mission from now, Captain Millicent. 
Yup, folks, she got demoted for her uh, for her actions during the final three episodes of season one. But she's now uh, she's now earned a moniker. She's known in the ranks of the Republic as Bloody Regina. Cause um, the way I see it, she na ngayon ang hander na pinakamataas na kill rate. Ooh, and let me describe her uh, her new look now. She sports a red streak right here, and she's the only one in the Republic, right? In well, in the armed forces right now, who wears a black uniform. Probably as a sign of protest for um, the mistreatment of the '86. Yep. That that would that would probably be the rule of it. Okay, but wow, she looks good in black. Okay, she looks fucking good in black. Chaka mayro pa siyang dito ng yan yung red streak. Mas astig ang itsura ni uh, ni Regina ngayon. Ani uh, yah ni bloody Regina as she's called now. She starts her day by uh, of course reporting for work and the usual. Uh, Calling by uh, by the older gentleman, <laughs> yeah, gentleman officers who look like scumbags who drink around, yeah, he they drink on duty. But uh, she met up with her uh, her best friend who's a researcher. You know, she'll be reporting to her in two hours. Then she now has a new unit, the one that replaced Shin and the others. So. Ang call sign ng ng team leader niyan ay Cyclops. Babae ang leader nato. So yeah, uh, yung usual ng S yung SOP na ginawa niya noon for uh, for Shin's unit. Ganon din ang ginagawa niya rito sa bago niya. So while all of this was going on, we 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 find that we found out that oh Shin and um. Uh, the uh, the first 86 there's they're all there's they're all still alive pero they have been taken in by the Gion Federacy which uh which is also an enemy of the legion so they've been taken in by um uh you call this by 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 a guy called Ernst i forgot his um I forgot his I forgot his last name. That's the Ernst on first name, yeah. Word spread like wildfire that um, these eighty six yeah, Sina Shin have been uh, have been rescued by the Federacy and um, due to their interviews uh Nalama na ng ng Bong Federacy uh, it's citizen it's citizenry at least na they've been mistreated, their uh, their human rights were violated and um, kumaga, ang dami na nagrarali sa kalye about them. Kailangan, uh, save the 86. Save, um, uh, basta, save the 86. And, um, uh, Shin and company couldn't make, couldn't make sense of it all. But anyway, they were introduced to their new home. <laughs> And uh, they were introduced to uh, the to Ernst's little sister. Parang ano nito eh? Parang siyang refugee. Parang siyang refugee. Pero ang um, ang bilang kasi ni Ernst kailangan ni 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 should treat each other like siblings, brothers and sisters. Pero iba yung naging ano eh, unang salvo of treatment ni Shin. Sila bulo tanya nito. <laughs> Kasi masyado pasaway. Eh sabi naman ng mayordoma nila, oh, it's your fault. <laughs> Don't blame them. Eh, she's got a point. Talagang, talagang pasaway na bata to. So, Shin and company may have their hands full with this kid. <laughs> Final scene. Well, merong, meron pa lang na-recover na item dun sa juggernaut ni Shin. It's a piece of uh, it's it's actually a piece of uh, his brother's uh, juggernaut before the legion before the legion took him. 
uh, which she actually treasures. Daladala niya parati yon tuwing meron tuwing sasabak sila sa labanan. Pinigay uli sa kanya. And so while um well while this was going on, uh Captain Milise is preparing for uh what he, what she theorizes as a as the biggest uh, legion offensive ever. Pero uh much to her dismay hindi siya pinaniniwalaan ng mga ng ibang superiors niya. Well, uh, during the first third of the episode, she we found out that she's at odds with her commanding officer. Na, uh, pero well, talagang pinagsasalita niya lang ang hindi maganda. Eh. Talagang wow. Um, Bloody Regina is is actually living to her moniker. Si Bloody Regina. And season of 86 started out really, really well. So let's break this pilot down, ARD style. Base. First start of the episode, naging uh, ne, opening scene. Only the opening scene uh, was tense. Had a tense pacing, kasi bakbakan eh, between the 86 and the Legion, and their handler is uh, Captain Milize. The rest, uh, medyo, I couldn't say slow. Medyo, there were tense moments between Bloody Regina and her commanding officer. I, ako ang nagulat eh. Oh, ina, pati commanding officer mo, inaangasan mo na. <laughs> wow! Sabi ko, wala nga. Astig ka ngayon na. May pinaghugutan naman si Regina eh. Kasi, Despite her pleas to uh, to treat the 86 better, the the Republic of San Magnolia still still treat them as pigs. So, siguro probably after her house arrest, she was demoted. Then, uh, while she was, uh, siguro probably after her dem- after her demotion, she started wearing the black uniform. At saka nagpastrik sa rito ng pula. Siguro as a sign of protest uh, for um, for mistreating the 86. Eh, kasi um, Albans uh, revere their hair very much. Kasi kung Alban kaya white haired, uh, silver haired ka, ibig sabihin uh, maharli ka ka. You're uh, you're you're in the upper class, the upper echelon of society of Magnolian society. Now, if your hair is different, if your hair is other than silver, you're trash. That is how they treat the 86. Kasi ang mga 86, wala namang, wala namang silver hair sa kanila eh. Walang, walang alban sa kanila. So, that's what the pacing will make you realize. It's racism all over again. Pero, There's something about the pacing that make it's making me realize this. Ano tong giad federacy na to? Hmm. Are they actually sincere in their treatment with uh with Shin and and company or front lang to? They're just as uh, they're just as prejudicial as as San Magnolia. But based on Uh, sa mga nagrarali no na isang eksena ganoon lang eh ganoon lang ang tingin ko eh but anyway maganda ang pacing ng ng pilot ng 86 part 2 flow naman well first gear shift here was was uh, was the scene where uh, Captain Milize was starting her day She's now known as Bloody Regina because she is now the top handler with the highest skill rate. Like I said a while ago, uh, Albans value their hair very much. It's a sign of their uh, being an aristocrat in this society. Pinagalong pa naman ni Regina. So, I am very sure she has pissed a lot of aristocrats off. With that, with that red streak of hers. Tapos, nag, nag-itim na uniform pa siya. 
although yung same prescriptions for for her rank nandon pero I tell you mga lifestyle it's a a totally black uniform mas mukhang uh, mas captured yung angas niya ngayon she doesn't want to be an ass kisser anymore that's probably what her uniform is trying to tell everybody in San Magnolia no so that's what uh, that's what this gearship is trying to tell me yeah that's why I call it a gearship kasi nakita natin dito ang changes kay Regina after after the finale of season 1 second gear shift was Shin and company uh, uh, they're still alive akala nga natin lahat napatay na silang lahat eh because yun ang pinalalabas ng finale ng season 1 di ba especially Shin kasi pinakita doon sa final scene na wala na siyang ulo so we we really thought that uh, the legion has captured him and used his brain to be part of uh, to be part of their armed forces uh, yeah, I thought talagang you would say that it was a sad finale. It was a sad finale. But with this gear shift, oy, buhay pa pala kayo. So now, um, if you would probably look ahead by at least two episodes, uh, the way I see it, sasali sila Shin sa Army of Fed, sa Armed Forces of Federacy. Because um, well, in all indications, they are uh, they are political prisoners. Pero uh, Ernst sees them differently, because they're just well, they they may be political prisoners, but they're also human rights victims. They were mistreated by the by the country they fought for, so. Ernst sees this as a way to um, to bargain with uh, with San Magnolia because the way I see it, the Legion has two enemy countries: San Magnolia, of course, uh, the Republic, and of course, and now the Gion Federacy. Nakita natin kanina that they are also preparing to go to war with the Legion. And siguro, they, yeah, they need uh, these former 86 to to fight alongside them. Kasi, they take a battle experience sa mga to and they've been treated like pigs in San Magnolia. So, probably, uy, deep dive. <laughs> That's what this gear shift made me do. Final gear shift. That's when... Shin and company were uh, were homed into into Ernst's own home. Kasi on paper, uh, inampun pala silang lahat ni, ni Ernst along uh, along along this this uh, this this really unruly kid. <laughs> Bakit ko tinawag ng Shin? Simply, mga lifestyle. For the first time. These 86 are experiencing a somewhat normal life. A life without war, a life without prejudice, and definitely uh, probably a life of peace. Pero, I don't know. Uh, I think it's just a false peace. Na, well, probably nira ride on the central government nito. I can't. I just can't. Uh, I just can't trust the Gion Federacy yet. It's just episode one. Eh, siempre. Well, if you if you've seen season one of this anime, mat medyo matotro maka because you would always see the issue of racism in season one. Because on how on how the Republic treated the eighty six. Talagang sending them off toward to their deaths, technically. Tapos, uh, well, you would you would also be happy with Shin and company experiencing this kind of life, kasi talaga yung ano? Eh, it's uh, there's a sixty percent chance that they will experience a peaceful life. They deserve it. They're just, 
wala pang 18 na mga to eh. Wala pang 18. Tandaan niyo, especially si Shin. Shin is only 15. Pero team leader na siya ng 86. To subject a 15-year-old to to a bloody war. Tapos meron pang ganitong racism na that he has to deal with. <sighs> Tapapagano ka na lang eh. So you should feel happy uh, when you see this gear shift. Talagang uh, mapapasabi ka na ay salamat. Sana ganito na lang. Sana ganito na lang. So these three gear shifts that I saw may or may not play a role down the line in this anime. Kasi I'm not sure yet on which which of these gear shifts will will actually play a role in this an, in uh, in season 2 of 86. So all three of them may or may not play a role. Plot-wise, Malinis. You gotta admit, the the finale is is a really sad one. Do you, is it is it totally necessary for um, for A1 Pictures to to make us uh, relive that? I don't think so. Sigurado sa mga nanood ng season 1, fresh na fresh pa rin sa mga isip nila ang naging finale ng season 1. And so, yeah, A1 Pictures made the right call here by not recapping uh, what happened during during the finale of season 1. Talagang, the story has moved on, pero gave us really good news that Shin is still alive and so are his uh, comrades. So silang lima. Yung uh, yung limang deserters with the way the republic treats them, they're they're already considered dead. Hindi na ano, hindi na, you they're they're not calling them deserters right now. They're dead. That's what this plot will make you realize. Kasi kung nag uh, recap sila rito, Hindi bagay eh. Hindi bagay sa main continuity ng pilot. So, uh, for me, it felt really good that um, the storyline has moved on. Talagang, uh, the pilot has its own continuity to for us to focus on. Yun, yun ang naging feeling ko. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this pilot. Galing! All I can say right now is, welcome back, 86. So, 86 Part 2, Episode 1. Napaniwala ako na sa finale na ano na, na baka wala na sumunod dito but uh, immediately after the finale ended the teaser came out for season 2 so ako paano paano magkaka season 2 to so uh, I've been racking my brain a little bit for the next two seasons the next two anime seasons so I thought Okay. Tapos, uh, inilabas na yung key visual ng part 2. Sabi ko, ah, so ibig sabihin, buhay si Shin. And who's this, um, uh, who's this girl na mayroong white, red streak dito? I- hindi ko talaga nakilala si Regina. Sa key visual na I thought it was another person. I, 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 Actually, thought it was another character. It was a whole new character. Pero it's Regina rin pala. Let's just say she's um, she's been sporting a pair of balls since season one. Her balls have gotten bigger. Kaya nag sports na ng red streak dito, then black uniform. And I'm very sure she has pissed a lot of uh, aristocrats, a lot of uh, generals. A lot, a lot of her superiors. 
more likely. Pero um, I think she doesn't want to um, speak out on behalf of the 86 anymore. She'll just let her actions do the talking for her. Man, wow. And if you've seen the episode, did you see the way she talked to her to her immediate superior in that scene? Putang ina. You're gonna get court-martialed again. So, eh, siguro talagang busit na busit na siya sa sistema ng San Magnolia. Okay. I'm gonna make sure uh, the Legion uh, the Legion gets his ass handed to them and at the same time, you will never, uh, I think she's referring to to the Republic, you will never hear the end of it from me. So, I like her demeanor right now. I like Regina's demeanor right now. And, siguro, pag nalaman niya na buhay pa sila, Shin, baka matuwa ito. Sigurado. Matutuwa ito. So, we really want to see that moment where uh, Regina and her former unit got, gets reunited. Kahit yun silang nima. Okay lang. It'll be, a, it'll be an absolutely great episode. But for now, Let's just leave it at this. The pilot. It's a, uh, it's a really appropriate pilot because everyone thought that 86 has ended in uh, in spring 2021. But for but for the entire summer, it really got me to think. So para pa pa lang ito. Eti ba na matay ng asisin? Tapos, nakulog si Regina. Remember, she she was placed under house arrest when she visited the actual site of the 86. Tumakas lang siya sa house arrest niya. So, that probably got him, got her into more serious trouble. Kaya siya na demote. So, we'll leave it at that first. There's nothing confirmed yet about that. Kaya, let's, ju- let's just savor the moment that 86 is back. So again, 86 Part 2, Episode 1, deserves another mic drop. First two months up after a long while, 86. Welcome back. So in typical 86 fashion, title of the next episode has been teasered. Huwag mo na natin paniwalaan. Let's just do the drill mga kalaysta like we always do. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this final digest of Volume 5. Summer 2021 anime season has uh, concluded and so will the ARD Volume 5. This is so far the uh, most toxic review season I've ever been in because um, after the first half of its run Peach, I dropped Peach Boy Riverside already because its episodes are so jumbled and if this keeps up I won't be able to distinguish uh, the finale from episode 7 because well you know what you know how Asai production screwed with the chronological order of that anime and of course I have to uh, seek out a replacement and eventually it was Phantom Pirate Princess that's why I called it a very toxic season <laughs> but I'm so looking forward now to, to fall 2021 because based on experience we've had a really good a really solid review season when it comes to fall. Kasi nung fall 2020, makaganda yung, maganda yung lineup natin nun at that time. With uh, titles like Jujutsu Kaisen, Ikebukuro Westgate Park, Higurashi 2020, yep, the reboot, season 1. And probably, yeah, more Yardy the Patriot. I will be expecting much from this particular anime season and well we've got we already have uh, 13 animes lined up for review this uh, for volume 
I so can't wait to review the new ones, especially. Uh, the holdovers will always be there. And I've also found a way to to pace myself schedule-wise. And Fall 2021 presented me with that opportunity to to really work out a timetable that will that will help me pace myself as a critic. So Maka Lifestyle, thank you for sticking it out with me this entire summer 2021, this entire volume 5. And I am very sure that you have that you liked this particular digest because it is the first time we are going to end an ARD volume with a milestone digest. This is number 70. So I feel quite accomplished because of the feat, because of the milestone. And well, there's only one thing I could say right now, Malaka Lifestyle. See you in volume six.